You cannot take the 500 most common words in a language and memorise them. Whether that be with cards like Anki, with spreadsheets, spreadsheets, you Billy Bullshitters, uh, with mnemonics, even if you're Marcus Aurelius himself, you cannot take the 500 most common words in a language and through dedication and self-discipline, memorise them. I'm James. This is Future Multilingual. We're going to be talking about two pieces, well, one piece of research, well, one grand body of research, which is by Dr. Jeff McQuillan. I'll put the video I did with him underneath this video. And we're going to be looking at the Pianta Dosi um, paper again on um, how potentially AI can make meaning, large language models. So you'll see how this all, and we're going to look at how those two things fit together. So what did McQuillan say? McQuillan, importantly, and he's got lots of research, he's got lots of data to back this up from his own research, said that the acquisition of vocabulary is incremental, meaning, well, meaning you don't do it deliberately, meaning you get it through reading, listening, yeah, participating in conversation. You acquire it in context, in that way, incidentally. It is not, it is not, as the spreadsheet makers would have you believe, the focus of your activities. It is incidental. It is incremental. And this is where I think it fits in with the Piantadosi paper. It is incremental. No. Yes, incremental. It is incremental, James. It is incremental, meaning, meaning that you gradually bring this into your system. So what McQuillan is saying here is that you take a word and as you see it more and more, subconsciously at an implicit level, your brain is gathering more and more data on what that word means and how that word is used. Because you're seeing it again and again and again in real context. <sighs> we, we're going to have to say this again, a sentence isn't context. A story is context. An article is context. A newspaper is context. A page on Wikipedia is context. They are all context. And you incrementally gather more information about this word and how it is. You don't memorise how words are used either or how they're pronounced. Your brain is incrementally gathering information on, on how it sounds as well when you hear it. And then eventually, through this incremental process, you have that word available to you spontaneously. So it goes on the journey from first ever seeing it to spontaneous use. Through through you being able to recognise it when you see it, all the way to spontaneous use. Now, the Pianto Dosi paper was talking about meaning. And he was talking potentially about how um, large language learning models, language, was it large language models can, um, can have meaning because meaning isn't, doesn't necessitate representation in the real world. What meaning is, we all have a semantic geography so in our heads, yeah? Semantic, yeah? Related to the meaning of the word, yeah? So every time I bring in a new word, I'm making connections between that word and my other knowledge. And to me, and those connections, by the way, are different for every single person. Because I may have connections between the word hate and the stairs that I've fallen down on more than one occasion. Yeah, they're a nightmare, those stairs. <laughs> and you might not have the connection between hate and spiral staircases. <laughs> but I do. But anyway, I digress, I digress. What I'm saying is this, to me, the McQuillan idea of incrementally developing knowledge and incidentally doing so, yeah, locks in with the Piantadosi idea of building this semantic geography where, where things aren't represented necessarily by something in the real world, but have a conceptual link to other concepts. 
Does that make sense? Last time I said, I saw it as like a mind map with lots of concepts and lots of links between those concepts different for all of us. And as we build more links for a concept, potentially, or as a concept becomes stronger in our mind, because we're aware of it more, we're seeing it again and again, and building more links, that concept is likely to be there to use spontaneously. That vocabulary is likely to be there to use spontaneously. And I just don't think... So all of that, this conceptual geography, in my opinion, is in your implicit memory. There is a different conceptual geography in your, implicit, in your explicit memory. Implicit knowledge being the type of knowledge you can use spontaneously without having to consciously search for it. So that is my thinking here. And I don't think, because I do think memorising creates a different type of knowledge, but I don't think you can just force things into this semantic geography. I don't believe that. I don't think there's much evidence for it, because again, the McQuillan research has shown that whilst two people, one memorising words and one reading, at first appear to be doing the same, when you make the calculation, how much time do they spend reading, how much time do they spend memorising, reading is much more efficient because you're making these conceptual connections, no? Memorising is just memorising. And also, later down the line, the memorised words have gone. They've gone. There's those words that you create, you acquired incrementally, and that you created these, made part of your conceptual geography, your implicit conceptual geography, semantic geography as well. I don't, either of those will do on that occasion. Those are still there forming part of your long-term knowledge of the world, of the language. What do you think about this? My name's James, future multilingual. Think about liking or sharing or both this video and think about subscribing to this channel.